Here we have the Lenovo IdeaPad 3. Now this laptop is meant to be sort of a cheap entry level machine meant for those needing something basic, maybe like a, a student starting out or like your grandmother who just needs to write email and, and uh, do the occasional Word document, stuff like that. This laptop is a little bit of like, uh, it's like a jack of few trades and a master of even less. But uh, that said, uh, it's not the worst laptop in the world. I'm gonna, maybe I should stop prefacing these videos in that regard. But it's not the worst laptop in the world, but it's not very good. I don't think you should buy one, and here's why. This laptop has an Intel i3 processor, 256 gigabyte solid state drive, and that is NVMe, not, not uh, SATA. A couple of fun things to note about the IdeaPad 3 is that if you want to expand your storage, it does have an extra so slot for a SATA hard drive, uh, but it does not come with the cable that you need in order to connect the hard drive to the motherboard, but there is a little, like a little uh, ribbon cable port for it. So anyway, something to keep in mind, you probably could expand the storage on the thing if you had to, but it is going to require hunting down an extra cable, which will be a pain in the butt. Also, I have never seen a laptop that isn't a two-in-one get this flat before. That, that's kind of cool, even though the rest of it is janky. It has a 15.6 inch non-FHD non-touch screen. That is one of the deal breakers right there. The screen is, is awful. Now, it doesn't help that uh, at the lower right corner here, there, and you, you can't see it on camera, maybe I'll try to get a close up of it, but uh, that there is basically some graphical artifacting down there. Either the screen or the graphics card was defective in this particular test model, which, you know, shit happens, you get a lemon every so often. But nevertheless, I think it's sort of a statement towards its quality. These Lenovo idea pads are not known for holding up that well, and Lenovo's customer service when repairing them is even worse. Uh, we've had it to where people have had the hinges break away from the screen, and when you send it back to Lenovo for repair, they take about a month to get the thing back to you, which we feel is a little bit on the unacceptable uh, side of things. But that being said, that's what you should expect from the IdeaPad and Lenovo's customer service. You will get knocked down in terms of the, uh, the triaging there. As far as features are concerned, this thing does have 802.11ac. It does have Bluetooth built in. It has no Windows Hello compatibility compatible camera, fingerprint scanner, anything of that nature. It does have this cute little flap where you can privacy shutter to close the uh, camera up there at the top, which is kind of a nice touch and I think people are gonna like that. And because today marks October, what is it, October 5th, it is the uh, first day Windows 11 is available and this thing is Windows 11 compatible. Uh, it does have the latest Intel processor generation, so that means you have Windows 11 no problem at all. Keyboard, typing on the keyboard is not too bad. It's uh, The keyboard has this sort of nice textured feel. It's got gray keys with white lettering, which I love. Uh, there is no backlight on this keyboard, but it is full size, so that means that if you are like an accountant or somebody doing data entry, it's gonna be pretty good for that. And we found that typing on this thing is ultimately pretty nice too. It, it feels good, it's tactile, it's responsive, you don't get a lot of typos. The keys are kind of this weird shape where they have this sort of like rounded uh, bottom there, but it doesn't seem to affect your typing abilities and maybe some people might even like that uh, aesthetically. Touchpad leaves a lot to be desired. It's small, it's uh, kind of ghosts a little bit. I mean, it's okay. It's not the worst one I've used, but it's not the best one I've used either. Uh, again, this is an entry-level machine. They're not gonna put anything premium on there or put some big honking trackpad on there. It, you get what you get, and that's like basically a, a parts bin trackpad. So, but at least it matches the color of the chassis, which is kind of a nice touch, and more to say than what some of the Hewlett Packards have. Uh, as far as just general build quality is concerned, it's built like shit. It is not built well at all. It's chinsy feeling. The plastics don't feel like they can hold up. I don't think, I mean, I feel like if you're a student or a traveler and you're really putting this thing through the ringer, whipping it in and out of your bag, I don't think it's gonna hold up well at all. It's one of the few laptops that I can actually honestly say that with too. Uh, it's typical that even with very cheap laptops, they still feel sturdy and they're built pretty well. Even when these uh, like, like HP Stream laptops, and I hate Hewlett Packard, but even these HP Stream laptops, are, are they feel you know like they can kind of take a beating. I have no confidence in this thing whatsoever. So if you are looking to buy a laptop, but you're abusive towards it, maybe you're the kind of person that lifts the laptop up by its screen, I don't recommend you do that, but, uh, or you're just somebody that just generally is not very careful with your things, uh, this laptop is not gonna be for you. It will not last very long. 
Which maybe segway, segues me into my next point, which I'm not really sure this laptop is for anybody. If you need something 15.6 inch and cheap, I almost feel like you're better off going with the Gateway 15.6 inch thing that you can get from Walmart. We reviewed one of those. Uh, you could also get one of those like HP um, 15, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but one of those like 15.6 inch HP machines that are sub 300 bucks. Um, did a review on one of those as well. Uh, this laptop, the speakers are okay. There's no bass. Yes, I know it's pronounced bass, people. There's no bass to speak of. There's no mids. There's just kind of like these non-distorted lows, and they get loud enough, but you're not going to be able to listen to any kind of music on them. You're not even really going to watch want to watch a movie on it either. You're really only going to be able to use this for like a podcast or something. Uh, but you obviously do have a, a port to plug in some headphones, which you are absolutely going to have to do. Uh, the screen is atrocious quality. Even if you get one that has a working screen, it is one of the worst displays we've seen in a long time. Not only is it non-FHD, it's got backlight bleed. Uh, the colors are kind of crappy. Uh, horrible, horrible screen. Shame on you, Lenovo. You shouldn't have done that. Build quality, not that great either. Input and output is okay. Let's see here. We have a two USB super speed ports. There's no USB-C, uh, but two USB super speeds, nothing that you can charge on. USB regular, where you'd probably plug in your mouse dongle. HDMI full size. It's kind of a nice touch, I suppose. Some people still want to plug into a projector. And then of course, where you plug it in. I should just let you guys say the line at this point because it doesn't, it doesn't fucking run on solar energy. And it never will. And then on this side, you've got the headphone jack and then a full size SD camera card. Um, I, I, you know, IO is not hateful on it. There are worse laptops with worse IO, uh, but the USB, lack of a USB-C port is something to keep in mind, although people buying this particular laptop may not really care about USB-C in the first place. I just think that there are better options. Uh, this thing is going at about the 350-ish range, I think. I'll have to double check that and I'll put a little pop-up on, on the video. So it's worth noting that as of recording the video, the price of this laptop is now going for $450, uh, which is an absolute ripoff. Do not buy it for $450. Bucks. Rip off. Rip off. I don't really think that it's great value. And, you know, it's not that feature rich. It's okay. I mean, again, the laptop is okay. If there's absolutely nothing, if, if you are, if you and this laptop are the only things left on this planet after a zombie apocalypse, there's just no, no other laptops out there and you need to make new baby laptops, I suppose that you could, you, you'd be fine with this laptop, but yeah, that was a weird, that was a weird analogy. Um, but if there's nothing else you, and you have to use something, I guess you could use this. Um, but otherwise, I think that you should hunt for something else. Either pay a little bit more, get an Acer Aspire, uh, pay a little bit less, get one of those HP 15 inch cheapies, uh, or maybe even go with one of those gateways. The speakers on this are better than the gateways, but the gateway screen is superior. There are some trade-offs. I don't, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend this Lenovo IdeaPad 3. Uh, if you wanna get one anyway and prove me wrong and say how bad my opinion is, hey, knock yourself out, but uh, I think, uh, I don't think that you're gonna enjoy it uh, that much. I wanna show you really quick though, the benchmark here, gaming is tree trunk status. It's about as, almost as bad as you can get. Same with workstation. Basically, you're not gonna wanna do any kind of video production, audio processing, anything real serious with this thing. It's not a gaming laptop. It's not a powerhouse either. And then right here you have desktop, which reached level of destroyer, which is fantastic actually for a little entry level machine. Productivity wise, it will do that stuff. I mean, it will do Word, Excel, and PowerPoint and multiple Chrome and Firefox tabs and you'll have no problem doing your general office related tasks with this thing. So maybe that's who it's for, somebody that's like in a non-profit or something like that. But there are, again, there are just better options out there. You can kind of get the same sort of performance out of a laptop with either better value or just just different. Anyway, battery life, same thing. Nothing to write home about either. They claim it gets, I don't know, something like seven hours or something along those lines. You will not get more than four out of using this thing. You just won't. Um, they did not put a big enough battery in there. It just, it, it's not optimized. Not good. Anyway, uh, if you're thinking about buying a Lenovo IdeaPad 3, the entry level one, uh, by the way, I like Lenovo products in general, like Yoga's are nice machines, love the ThinkPads, just this IdeaPad 3 entry level one is not very good. If you're thinking about buying one of these, uh, I'd probably look elsewhere, um, but if you have any questions, reach out to us in the comment section. Please like and subscribe, um, and we will be back with another video really soon. Thanks for watching.